Is Champa versus Gargano better than the Boneyard match? I am Chopper Peak Quinnell, and today I'm joined by our very special guest, Adam Blompier. It's Whoa. me. I'm better than Laurie. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Uh, Laurie is busy today getting uh, working on the next Explained video for Parts Fun Known, so super busy with that, so he can't make it today, but we've got Adam instead, so it's not all Yay. bad news. Um, yeah, please give this video a like and a subscribe. Uh, help us out with Wrestle Talk growing things. Do what the algorithm wants you to do. Um, as we talk about this episode of NXT, which had two TakeOver-style matches on it, uh, the first one we're going to be talking about is this Champa versus Gargano end of an era, once in a lifetime. I don't know. There's other catchphrases I'm sure they're going to throw out there. The, the fi final beat, one more final beat. The beat, last beat at the Heart Boys. The Heart Beat. Yep. The Hearty Boys. The Hearty shot Boys. Through the, shot through the heart. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this was, this was the culmination of Gargano versus Champa and their feud, which is a pretty big deal. Um, and they did it in a cinematic style so after wrestlemania when we had the boneyard match and the firefly funhouse match being arguably the two best matches on the card and then we've got another what i thought was a brilliant cinematic uh match and, and a different style as well because obviously the firefly funhouse was completely trippy off the walls craziness about the cena's career and the fiend's career and how they all intertwine and vince mcmahon and the boneyard match was just like Undertaker's going to hit you a bit, and he's a bit spooky, and there's druids. It was a bit bonkers, a bit nuts. This one was just more of like the... Okay, I'm going to... Bear with me on this one. It's more like the Final Deletion. Final Deletion is ridiculous. However, it was more of a wrestling match in a ring, as well as Dilapidated Boat and all that craziness on top of it. But it was, first and foremost, a match in a ring... And this was kind of in that style. It was a cinematic shot. There was lots of cool tracking shots and loads of unique ways of looking at, at wrestling. But it was just two guys in a ring with the ref, no crowd, and just shot really, really well. Um, and I thought it was bloody awesome. Uh, the, the whole match itself was so back referential on itself, on their whole feud. So many spots revisited, loads of trash talk throughout it, which I thought was awesome. Um... The only sticking point, which I didn't like, was the finish, really. Because Candice LeRae came out and started yelling at both of them, just being like, what are you guys doing? Please stop it. You're killing each other. Please stop it. And then she turns to Champa and says, are you happy? I hate my husband. I don't <laughs> like know who he is anymore. I don't like him anymore. <laughs> and she goes, are you going to finish it? No, cool. Well, I'll finish it. Turns around and just kicks Johnny square in the dick. Uh, he falls to the floor. She walks away. I really like this bit from Gargano, who started crying because his wife had left him, I guess. Champa then comes in in an emotional great moment. Just goes, I didn't want this. I'm sorry. And apologizes to Gargano for all of this. And then it's revealed that Candice comes back in, turns heel by kicking Champa in the dick. And Gargano was wearing a bloody cup, wasn't he? And then Gargano hits the fairy tale ending and he pins Champa on the exposed wood that was a throwback to the second match they had in the, the street fight where Champa won. And Johnny picked up the win. I wasn't a huge fan of the finish, but the match itself I thought was bloody awesome. What did you think, Adam? I think comparing it to the Boneyard match or the Firefly Funhouse match is actually, I think, maybe the wrong lens to look at it. I think this is the uh, Edge Orton match that we should have had. Mm. Uh, so that one kind of similarly shot, like, uh, goes it goes on top of a truck. There's lots of crying. Um, it, I, I thought that was... Um, I thought this was like... It, it did a walk and brawl in a really interesting way. So I definitely will say I liked it. I liked it. I don't I think this and everything that's happened, obviously this isn't the match that they would have put on. They would have definitely like, you could argue that whatever happened, uh, Taker always should have wrestled in the Boneyard match because he can't do it live anymore. Uh, but this definitely would have been a full blown, unbelievable hour long takeover match. And instead what we got was a really cool movie. Uh, it was, yeah, it was definitely interesting uh, walk and brawl. I just think uh, it, it was, 
like I said, it, it, nothing really felt different enough for me in terms of the content of the match to really justify them going back to this well, especially with the uh, role reversal of Gargano and Champa, because I just don't really buy Champa as the hero in this story. Uh, I thought the bit at the end where he was comforting Johnny because his wife had just divorced him via kicking him in, in the nuts. Uh, I thought that was really, like, that's the most baby face he's sort of been in this whole angle. Cause remember like, Champer is a villain. He he, <laughs> he broke Johnny's mind. If Johnny's in a bad place now, it's because Champa put him there. And so kind of rooting for Champa to finally triumph over Gargano, it gives the match a flavor which I it didn't I didn't really buy. And that took it away a, a lot for me because Gargano's always been the hero of the story. Uh, I'm glad he won, but like I said, it, I'm I'm sorry that he kind of took Candace down with him. She's always, it's always been a difficult time for her interacting with the story. She's always been Johnny's wife. And I actually thought the way they were just going to end it with being like, Candice is tired of being a prop in this story. Uh, I'm tired of being like, I'm tired of watching someone I care about and another person I care about destroy each other. Uh, I'm out. Sorry, guys, I'm done. Uh, and that was the final thing. That That's the thing that kind of finally brings them together, that perspective to make them realize they're not just killing each other, they're also hurting people they care about. Uh, no, actually, it's a dastardly mustache <laughs> to kick Champer in the dick. Um, it's fine. Uh, I, I, I thought they made the best out of the situation they could have had. I just don't feel like this is a feud that should have been revisited, considering now it's finally done, which is very much uh, entitlement from me because, yeah, it's in terms of like a weekly wrestling show. I think this week's episode of NXT is insanely good. Uh, it's just that we are, I think we're used to better from these two. Uh, mm. it, it's done now. I think fine. Like you said, there was a lot of narrative stuff, mostly stuff we've seen before, like the crutch and the, the wood being exposed. Uh, I do like, I, I thought Champa performed really well, like from an acting perspective, I thought like a yeah, torn ACL. I finished that for you, not for them. Um, you know, I thought that, I thought that was good. I thought, um, but ultimately, yeah, like it left me a little cold just because uh, I think if if they were going to do it one more time, they really deserved that live crowd. And also, yeah, I just don't, I just don't buy Gargano as a villain right mm. now, especially especially against Champa. Like I thought Gargano being kind of mind broken and then being built back uh, to face. Uh, uh, Champa one last time at Takeover New York. That should have obviously been been that finish, but not to be. Yeah. It, but that's yeah. fine. Like uh, lots of highlights. Definitely not a boring match. Uh, definitely way more fun to watch uh, for than uh, Edge and Orton. Uh, and yeah, like weekly wrestling is is always good on NXT. <laughs> yeah. You know, like we're we're down to nitpicks now with these two because I I mm. that this match is not going to make it. It's not going to diminish it below being the best feud that NXT's ever had. It's still that. Obviously, yeah. it's still that. Yeah. The thing I'm worried about is with Candice's inclusion and the shock heel turn, it feels like this feud's got to carry on. And I know they said, I know they said that this is going to be the end, but I don't trust them because they, it's their best feud and they can just keep coming back to it. Maybe it's not right now, but that twist and the heel getting a, a sneak victory it feels like the feud's got to carry on and i really don't want them to because i feel like now it's starting to jump the shark i think if they carry on past that that's when it's going to start diminishing that whole feud because this should have ended this has gone past long-term booking now this is just like okay now you're just beating a dead horse so yeah. while this was great i agree with you i'm not buying gargano as a villain that much i just thought the match itself was really cool and I, 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 I don't necessarily buy Gargano as the villain when compared to Champa, but I do think Johnny does have something quite cool about him as a heel. I, mm, I oh do yeah. think that when he was doing his trash talk to Champa and when he was, oh, how many injuries have you had? Oh, was it the ACL? That and then really smashes good, the yeah. chair on the knee. And then it was like, oh, no one can forget the neck. And then just stabs him in the neck with the chair. I was like, good God. Like, that was cool. It's just, yeah, when compared to Champa, he's just not, uh, he's not a babyface. Yeah, Champa's, <laughs> like, Champa's sorry, always the been heel. the puppet master. Like Champa's exactly. yeah, the, the mastermind behind everything. I do think that um, Gargano and 
Larray, uh, that Johnny and Candice will make a awesome heel power couple at the top mm. of NXT. Like I, I, I think with Champa out of the picture, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think Gargano's got really like he's he's so he's very charismatic. His like his matches against um, uh, Alistair Black and Ricochet when he worked heel, like he's really compelling as a heel. It's just that compared to Champa, who is the the worst of men, uh, I don't I didn't necessarily buy it. But I think with Champa probably moving to the main roster now. Uh, these two can have a, an extended stay as like the evil king and queen of NXT. I think that'd be mm. really nice. Yeah, I'd be super into that. Um, and on top of that as well, I, going back to the original title of the video, I was thrown through much more of a, an emotional loop with this match than I was the Boneyard match. The Boneyard match, I really enjoyed from a, a very kind of outside perspective. And I was like, this is bonkers. What's going on? I love it. I was laughing at a lot of the spots in a good way. I wasn't laughing at it. I was kind of laughing with it. Mm -hmm. This one I felt was very, very serious. And I was taken through the, the highs and lows of the whole match and culminating when, you know, Champa apologized to Gargano after, you know, Candice walked away. That was that, a, I was yeah. like, I was like, oh, this is, Hmm, this is something special. And then, you know, Candice came back and it was a little bit diminished. But up to that point, I, I, I preferred it out of, it's not going to come close to the Five Life Funhouse match because that is just an absolute stroke. It's a, it's a master stroke. It's a genius match concept, whatever it was. It, it was brilliant. But I preferred this to the Boneyard match. Boneyard oh, okay. match was fun. I like this more simply from the emotion that it drives from me, because that I think is always the the sign of a great match to me is how invested I get into it. And I think the the Boneyard match had me at, at an investment from this is fun, whereas this match had me at an investment from I want to see one of these people win. I These spots are mental. I can't wait to see this feud end. And that whole story that they told through the match... I really, really enjoyed. I was, I was really digging it. So, in my humble opinion, I think it's better than the Boneyard match. Uh, I think it, I think it sort of is. Uh, I, I, that's the thing is, like, I think they're so different. Like the Boneyard mm. match was a asylum movie. This was like <laughs> a indie short film. Uh, kind of like it, it's. It had almost like Reservoir Dogs like elements to it. Like I, 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 I really liked it uh the tender moment at the end where they both apologized to each other i thought if it ended like that i would mm. probably be a lot more high on it, it ending with uh heel chicanery if, if you ask me which one i want to watch again i want to watch the boneyard match again uh mm. not necessarily because it's higher art if that is the kind of lens you want to look at it it's because it's silly doesn't require a lot of emotional uh, investment a bit shorter and it ends in like a big climax which leaves you kind of feeling satisfying it's like it's it's popcorn whereas this was mm. uh, kind of a lot tougher and ultimately uh i don't necessarily know if i want to watch the whole thing again like it was it was a visceral thing to watch and i'm glad i watched it like on normal speed uh because i didn't want to kind of like i wanted to yes yeah, savor the those moments because those these two performers have definitely earned those emotional moments they've earned these moments of quiet and they've earned a, a sense of earnestness and like unironic this no w this is art which the boneyard match never attempted because mm. yeah would you? um but ultimately yeah i think i know yeah it, it, firefly funhouse uh boneyard and then this only in terms of what i'd want to see again but i really do appreciate the ambition the storytelling mm. uh obviously like what these guys put themselves through doing this i know obviously some stunts were cut around but there was a lot of horrible things they, they did to each other um yeah i i i as an extension as something it's the best version of something that probably shouldn't exist Let's say that. Yes. Yeah. That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. That's that's top top draw. Um, but uh, that wasn't the only match on this card. We'll go through the uh, through the rest of the show now. Um, this uh, episode actually started off with the other takeover match that was supposed to happen uh, at Tampa Bay, which was the six women number one contenders ladder match uh, between. Okay, let's see if I can remember them. Chelsea Green, Io Shirai, Dakota Kai, Tegan Knox, Mia Yim. She's bad and, now. She's, and she kicks Candace someone in the dick. Larray. There you go. Almost forgot her, even <laughs> though she's in the story at the end. Um, 
yeah, and this match was just absolutely ridiculous. It went like probably 15 minutes and the spots just didn't stop the whole time. It was just constant. I tried keeping up with the spots in my notes and I just couldn't. I was literally, it just went, it just went spot, 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 spot. It was awesome from a pure yeah. like action perspective it was so so fun there was some really like creative spots as well there was like a, a ladder set up in the corner uh and chelsea green went for a kick her leg got caught in the ladder and then uh, i think it was me and just smash her knee with a chair i was like oh that's such a brilliant spot like there was some really creative cool stuff it wasn't just like here's a ladder here's a chair with nothing thrown into it there were some really creative cool spots you had robert stone and raquel gonzalez as well helping out their respective people robert stone trying to help chelsea green up the ladder and then getting pushed off and raquel, raquel gonzalez giving a uh, dakota kai like a, a fireman's carry up it thought it was it was really really fun um but uh yeah it got to the end where it was io shirai and candice were the final two and uh io shirai I think gouged her eye. I don't know, but kind of pushed her off the off the side onto Candice Ray, on, and Candice Ray fell onto this bridge ladder that was set up in the corner. It looked like a horrible bump to take mm. off the ladder, back like bending. It was like a, a Homer Simpson over the fire hydrant, her back <laughs> bending over the ladder and going into the ring. It was. It would look like a horrible spot to take. Just leaving Io Shirai at the top, she grabs the the briefcase. And uh, she gets the uh, the number one contendership against Charlotte Flair. Um, I thought this was awesome. I don't know what to think about EO versus Charlotte. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic match. And I, I'm really looking forward to that from just a, a match perspective. In the same way I was looking forward to Ripley versus Flair. Don't know if I want to see Shirai versus Flair, though. Like, in terms of characters... Yet. They're, 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 they just don't seem to match at all. Oh, I completely get the story with Ripley and Flair. I totally get the comparisons and the story they were telling. I don't know about Shirai and Flair yet. I, I, I'll, I'll wait. I'll withhold judgment and, and see if they build a great story off it. But uh, what do you think of the match? Uh, well, first of all, I just want to uh, compliment Marrow for calling the whole thing by himself. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, guy, right? and, and leaving very little room to breathe because as we've seen over the wrestlemania weekend uh one person uh, like it, it was the what natalia live morgan match which had tom mm. phillips doing it by himself that was death mm. um and, and don't get me wrong this match is more exciting than that match but also like yeah marrow is he he has a lot of one-liners uh, he started with uh, was it Good Morning Kitty Cats and Kittens um, from yep. Tiger King. He's 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 a very cute announcer, but mm. he's very very skilled at uh, keeping this sense of a tempo and uh, an intensity going, and that mm. really helped the match. Also, the fact it was so like there were so many people in and around the ring, uh, like. Uh, this is one of the few matches like of the whole WrestleMania experience, which took place in front of an empty crowd was an actual empty crowd match. And I didn't actually feel the empty crowd much mm. if at all, because there's just so many people. There's so much noise uh, that you, it masks it and it lets you kind of dive in, lets you kind of sit in the, in the match and enjoy it. I thought it was really, really good. Um, yeah. I, I love um there's just loads of little stories because that's yeah nxt is really really good at uh callbacks it's really really good at, at remembering its own history uh i mean all of this stuff is recent history but it's just it's all there like you wouldn't put these people in the ring and not expect you know io shirai and candice larray to come to a head you wouldn't expect um um Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai to not be doing something big and Tegan Knox almost got like the final revenge pushing uh Dakota Kai into a powerbomb through a table to the outside like uh before uh no no uh, pushing uh, Raquel uh Gonzalez mm. uh so revenge for takeover for that but then Dakota Kai once again sneaks in the back door kicks her through a ladder like there's oh, yeah great spot really 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 good I, I love Robert Stone almost doing a James Ellsworth yeah. uh, and getting uh, canned for that I thought that was but really fun. big fan of the fact that he climbed the ladder and tried to get to Chelsea to get the briefcase rather than just climbing it and getting it himself there's yes. the difference thank you Peter yes exactly yeah. uh I yeah I, I I really really dug it um did, I, yeah almost didn't notice that it didn't take place in front of a crowd obviously if it had I thought uh it would have been received amazingly uh that's always going to be a shame but i thought uh yeah this is going to be remembered very fondly and to your point about io versus charlotte so i've seen a lot of people very cross that charlotte is nxt champion mm. i 
understand, but I am starting to get a little tired of it because I think, um, like, I was really worried that Chelsea Green was going to win this match. Not because mm -hmm. I think Chelsea Green is bad, it's just that she's not at the level where you, Charlotte waltzes into NXT and gets a hype match. Like, I wanted Charlotte to walk in and fight someone big because so many people are upset that Charlotte's NXT champion. But, like, the big, the big argument to that is, no, she's going to have matches with all of these people. Like, I want to see Charlotte fight everyone in that ring. Chelsea Green, the least. But still, like, after some time, build Chelsea Green up great. Mm -hmm. um, and now we've got Charlotte versus Io Shirai um, in an NXT landscape where character dynamic doesn't mean quite as much. It's more about mm. the match quality. And so many people are grumpy about it being just like, I, oh, Charlotte's just going to bury Io Shirai. It's just like, like, guys, come on. Like, you're going to see two of the best female wrestlers in the world fight in NXT. Like mm. we could, like Io Shirai could have been called up to the main roster, and that's when we see her fight Charlotte, and it'll be nowhere near as good. But we're going to see Charlotte Flair versus uh, Io Shirai potentially with an NXT Takeover quality match, and like maybe Charlotte will win. I, 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 you know, this is one of those like please try and enjoy the journey sort of things, and like mm. char character wise, yeah, it's heel heel, but that's not really meant as much in NXT. I'm really excited to see Io Shirai finally teach Charlotte how to do a moonsault. I think it's going to be really. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Imagine if Charlotte pulls off a a Shirai style moonsault just to flex on her, and just be no. like, yeah, well, I can do it too. <laughs> yeah, I I, I completely amazing. understand people get apprehensive because they. You know they they have this thing about Charlotte, the main roster in general, uh, and sort of protecting the sanctity of NXT. Uh, I, I don't know. Like I think NXT is going to make Charlotte better, not Charlotte making NXT worse. Yes, I Charlotte's agree already one, great. Sure. So yeah, yeah. yeah what, what's what's the kind <laughs> of what's the what's the main reservation with the the kind of the pairing for you, Pete? It's I don't know. I I would have thought that in the way that Charlotte won the title, beating you know, NXT fan favorite Rhea Ripley, who just kind of conquered the big conqueror Shayna Baszler in order to get the title and for in order for Charlotte to beat her, I would have thought that it would have been, the logical thing would have been someone like Candice LeRae, obviously she turned heel so it doesn't quite count, but kind of big baby face uh, character like, I don't know, maybe like Mia Yim or something like that would work much better because you would be like, hey, You've just come into NXT. You don't even go here, etc. And just say why you you shouldn't be holding the title that that belongs to us. Piss off back to the main roster. Essentially, I thought that would have been a much better story to tell as the first instance of Charlotte coming back. Then after that, explore the other options. But I thought oh, that, initially that that would be a good story to tell. As that's Charlotte that's completely NXT. fair. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that from a narrative perspective, yeah, that that totally checks out. Mm. I mean, like her versus Candice would have been a fantastic match. Oh, that would very, be great, yeah. almost quite difficult to watch because just there's just a sheer amount of blonde <laughs> in that match. Might have been looking at her like a magic eye picture, but uh, I, yeah, I, I, I'm still, I'm still pretty stoked. I don't oh, know who yeah. like who, who else is like the top because if Bianca's called up, which I, I get it. I think she mm. works. She works with the Street Profits. I really, really want to see her fight Charlotte, though. Yeah. Because I think that that's for me is like, like, because yeah, yeah, that is for that to me. That's the person that beat Charlotte, Bianca Bella, mm. because that story is already going, uh, and I don't necessarily feel like it's ended properly for Bianca. And uh, maybe they'll meet in the future in the main roster. Who knows? But like, yeah, I don't. Uh, now that Candice has turned, she was such a good baby face. Now that Candice has turned, I don't know who the big yeah, the big baby face is, unless you build up Tegan Knox, I guess. Mm. Unless I guess. Ripley comes back, wins it back. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, I'm not as into that. With NXT being like a full brand now, I guess you kind of, the way we look at the future uh, is a little different. Like maybe, mm. a, maybe yeah, the call up isn't the natural option anymore. Uh, but who knows? Like, I, I still don't especially in this climate, it's very difficult to actually work out who's called up, who's just mm. in the area and therefore filling time, who's yeah. like the safe option to put in these situations. So in terms of call-ups, it, maybe it's too early to read into it. But yeah, I, I, I want Bianca to truck Charlotte. That's really what I want. But we'll, we'll see. Uh, that would I, be fantastic. Great match. Uh, great win for Io Shirai. Mm -hmm. 
uh and yeah i can't wait to see the match so yeah, yeah i'm i'm very excited thumbs up all round. Um, after that, we continue the feud with uh, Balor and Walter. They're continuing that feud seemingly. I, I assume they were supposed to have the match at TakeOver Dublin, but obviously that's been canned for later. But they're still teasing that feud and trying to continue it in the way they can. Balor saying that NXT UK title is on borrowed time. I think Balor should beat Walter for the title, but that's just me. Um, and then after that, we get a load of recaps of different stuff uh, across nxt we get the recaps of the kidnappings because that's a thing that still happened uh with uh raul mendoza and joaquin wild um i'm sure that'll culminate at some point uh, and then we get the uh in-ring debut of this new tag team uh managed by malcolm bivens that's induce share is their name which we couldn't me and laurie could not understand what he said before but now we know it's induce share uh which I don't know what that translates to, but I do know that Cher, I believe, is Lion, I think, in Hindi. Because that was the uh, name, lest we forget, of Jinder Mahal's new theme after he, uh, when he became WWE Champion and got that whole revamp. And he got his new theme, I believe it was called Cher, a.k.a. Lion, I think. Uh, and definitions and meaning of Indus in English, an Asian river that rises in Tibet and flows through northern India and then southwest through Kashmir and Pakistan to the Arabian Sea. And it's also a faint constellation in the southern hemisphere near Telescopium and Tukana. So I think it, yeah, it's, it's the lions of the Indus River. That'll work then. Um, yeah, this was a, a squash match against a couple of guys called Ever Rise. Uh, yeah. And they win and they are big. Those are my two notes for this match because that was pretty much it. Ever Rise got some offense in. What I really like about NXT squash matches is it's not a complete squash, it's yeah. never like 100% this person just dominates because then when it gets to the point where that person eventually has a match where someone takes some offense on them, it's not completely out of nowhere. Cause you've already seen, they have a couple of weaknesses. They ever rise, got some offense in against this tag team. So when it comes to a point where they're facing whoever the bros awaits uh, and the bros awaits start doing all this offense on them, it's not out of nowhere. It's like, Oh yeah, they're just better than ever rise, which they are. Um, so I, I really enjoy that about NXT squash matches, but they do win in very quick fashion. Uh, they're big and beefy, and they do big moves. Yeah, major oh. authors of pain vibes from these boys, uh, totally. including the kind of slightly diminutive manager. I'm not sure about Malcolm Bivens. Not sure who he is uh, on and what his vibe is. He's a bit mm. weird. Like he was doing, he was doing this between them, the little dance like, thing. Yeah, yeah, like um, oh. Come on, brain. What was the name of the um, the manager for Authors of Pain? Paul Ellering. That's it. He, he gives yeah. off like like he really fit in with the vibe, like the glowering, like yeah. There's just something like I don't know if he adds or takes away from the team yet. It's way too early to tell. But yes, they they are they're big lads and they can mm. do stuff. Let's see if they do they good are. stuff. Yeah, hopefully they do good stuff. Um, we get a, a promo from Adam Cole just saying that about Velveteen Dream, he's going to end the experience at some point after this whole thing is over. I'm sure yeah, when, when he I'm, can come back to work. When I'm allowed out of my greenhouse, you're in <laughs> trouble. <laughs> uh, we do get an announcement, actually. The last thing we're going to talk about is uh, we do get a an announcement of a tournament, all the rage at the minute, these tournaments, uh, of a an interim cruiserweight champion is going to be decided because Jordan Devlin can't leave the bloody country. Uh, so they're going to be holding a, a tournament to crown an interim cruiserweight champion. Uh, and that starts next week on NXT. I don't know. They haven't announced who's going to be in it. Um, I would personally like someone like Isaiah Swerve Scott to win that, or maybe Leo Rush to kind of win that, win that back again. And then they have the kind of title unification match between Devlin and whoever wins this later down the line uh either way it's probably going to lead some really bloody good matches because it's the cruiserweight division in nxt it's really really good uh so either way i'm gonna be really excited for it but yeah mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to see someone like swerve or leo win i think yeah if gaza's not coming back gaza seems like the um like the obvious mm -hmm. choice because he wasn't pinned to lose a belt mm -hmm. um is cameron grimes a cruiserweight because I'd mean, like could, to see him. They could probably him. say that, yeah. Because I think he'd do really well with it. Uh, mm. I know they're both heels, 
but I mean, Jordan Devlin is going to find it a bit. I think he's going to find it fairly tricky to stay heel with this storyline because he's the rightful champion. Mm. Uh, you know, like yeah, champion versus champion is going to be the is going to be the big thing. I, I think Leo Leo would be good. I kind of want it to be someone we haven't seen before because that's what that's the best thing that NXT does with these or WWE in general does with these tournaments. They never have the obvious favorite win. They always introduce a new star and make them like TJ Perkins or. Mm. Um, you know, like Kyrie Zane. You know, they they kind of make these characters. So I I I would be interested to see a first time champion, maybe only Lorcan, if he's not completely mm. sick of the company, and and wanting to leave. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I yeah, I mean, who who whomever, but I I, it's going to be great, isn't it? It's going to oh, be totally. really really going to be some really good matches to look forward to. They're probably going to be the highlight of most weeks going forward. And yeah, that eventual champion versus champion match, whoever wins is probably going to be really bloody good because it's got Devlin in it and he's great. Um, but yeah, then after that, we just got uh, some more promos from Charlotte and Rhea Ripley. And then it was the Champa Gargano match. And that was NXT. I thought it was, it was a really great episode uh, Two takeover worthy matches. I thought uh, granted the, Champa Gargano one had a bit of a weird ending, uh, but I still thought the match itself was great. A really, really good episode. They're really doing some great stuff considering the circumstances they're in and the lack of crowd they have and all that stuff. They're doing some really great work. So thumbs up NXT. Yeah. Any final thoughts, Adam? Uh, yeah, really good. Like uh, for a weekly television show, for a weekly wrestling show without a crowd, it's the best it can be, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's totally. very, very good. Um, this and Dynamite are just uh, the pinnacles of pinnacles of weekly uh, no fans telly. Um, it's it's been a it's been a surprisingly great week for wrestling, really mm. surprising um, and yeah. very very welcome. Yes, totally. Uh, well, that is all the time we've got. So thank you for watching. Please press the videos that have just appeared on the screen to catch up with the latest awesome Wrestle Talk things and a button on the middle that will take you to become a pledge hammer on Patreon. I've been Chopper Peak Winnell. I've been joined by Adam Blompier, and that was NXT. Bye.